So in that scene, we obviously want the sound to change as the player enters the warehouse. So maybe some more reverbs on the footsteps, reduce the sound of the crickets. And we can actually do that without any coding and instead using snapshots inside of the FMOD session. And this is pretty straightforward, but as these are events, we need to think about a couple of things when we're setting this up with the game. But I'm going to start by showing you how we can set this up with snapshots and use the sandbox to test things out. So first of all, I've created a 2D timeline here and I'm going to right click and add a snapshot instrument. And I'm going to call this warehouse like that. And if we look in the mixer by pressing command or control two, we can see that under snapshots here, we have our newly created snapshot. So let's start by moving our snapshot back to the beginning here. And then I'm going to jump into the sandbox by going up to window and then either do control or command seven or just click on sandbox. And in the sandbox here, I need to make sure that I have a scene and I can create one by right clicking and create a new scene. But in my case, I already have one. So I need some events in here. And to start off with, if we look at the right hand side, I can see I have the ambience all. And I can use these toggles here to turn them off and on. But I can also use the computer keyboards to do this. So for the footsteps here, which is just one shot, like that, it's quite useful to use press the two key. Like that. We need our snapshot. So let's go to the top left here, snapshots, and just drag this in. And this will behave now like the other events. And snapshots are events, so they will happen when we launch them. So if I select my warehouse here, we can see that a couple of things happen. We get a play functionality up here, and then all of the faders and all of the active parts of the mixer turn green. And this is just to indicate that none of these are now controlled by the snapshot. But if I make a change here, so let's take my ambient bus here and then push it down to infinity. And then if I uncheck my warehouse, it will jump back to the original value. And we can also play this in real time. So if we jump back to the sandbox and I'm gonna press one to start the ambience. And then we'll press three to start the snapshot. And then our ambience disappeared there, our crickets disappeared. And let's start them again. So turn off the snapshot. And then we can do a quick mix of this and try it out in the game. But to do this, I need to make sure that I have the warehouse selected in the mixer, because otherwise I'm actually making the changes to the mix. So in our game, we need a trigger for this. So I'm simply gonna click on my warehouse here and I'm gonna create a cube. And let's call that warehouse rev song. And then just position this. And then make sure that that is a trigger and I'm gonna turn off the mesh and let's add an FMOD Studio Events Emitter. And we want this to be on trigger enter. And we want it to stop on trigger exit, of course. And then our collision is player. And the event is our snapshot here. And then I'm just gonna turn down the level of the gate so we can hear the transition a bit better. So it works, but two things happens that we don't want to. One is that it transitions so abruptly, and the other one is that it's coming back once we've entered the warehouse. And the reason why it does this, it's because it's an event on the timeline. So we can see here that it actually starts here on one, and then it ends here on two, and after that it stops. So we need a way of making it stay in this state. As this is an event, an easy way of making it stay in one place is to add a loop to it. So I'm gonna right click, add a loop region, and I'm just gonna have it loop in the middle of the event because I need a little bit in the beginning for the attack and a little bit in the end for the release. 
And then I'm going to add some automation to the intensity here on the bottom left. So let's add automation. And we'll have maximum intensity during the loop. And then we'll have an attack and a release. And I'm going to make the release a little bit longer. So let's make it to three. Drag it out. Something like this. Now this will work perfectly fine in the game in the beginning of this because essentially it will come to this point and it'll play to the loop like that. But when we stop, it will just stop. And we don't want that because we want it to play the release. So I'm gonna to go to the loop region, go to the bottom left and add a condition. And the event condition is not stopping. So now if we play this and it will loop and then we'll stop and then we'll play the release. So let's build this and try this in the game. And alternatively, you can set this up in the mixer. So I'm gonna get rid of this automation here. So let's just remove the automation. And I'm gonna jump into the mixer, go to the snapshot. And on the intensity at the bottom right, I'm gonna right click and add an ADSR. Let's do a little bit of attack and then we'll build this. It's worth noting that this release happens after the event has finished playing. So if you want it to happen faster, then you have to shorten the event. We can continue to add snapshots per event, but we can also streamline the process a little bit. So in the game here, I've got more zones. So I've got an open warehouse section here. I've got a container and I've got an open container here in the middle, which I'm also using in between the container and the house here. Uh, and to make this work, in FMOD I have added a parameter uh, which has the different sections or the zones. And then for each magnet region here, we're adding the particular zone that we're going to, like this. Uh, like before, when we press play, it will play to the loop. And then when we stop, it will release. And on the release, we're setting back our snapshot zones to the main mix, which is the main mix. And at the end of this instrument, we're jumping this to a destination market that stops the whole event. So if I play this as it is now, and it will loop, stop it, change the parameter back to main mix, and then jump to the end of the timeline, which will stop the whole event. And in Unity, I'm now adding this parameter here on the event emitter. So in this case, Warehouse, warehouse, and if we go to open warehouse, we're triggering that parameter. And like before, we can pre-mix this in the sandbox before we mix it in the game. Just remember that you click on the snapshot as you're setting the values, because otherwise you'll change in the main mix. And then when we're done, we just need to remember to build this and then we can test it in the game.
So some tweaks are needed, like putting the jumps into the right return. But now we have a starting mix and now we can keep working on this. Thanks for watching this tutorial and happy game audio.